This is the story of the most devastating war in the history of the human race. It's the near future. The population is rising relentlessly. The Earth's natural environment is destroyed, and the world is in a terrible state. In response, man builds colonies in space, to which vast numbers of people are moved. The space colonies are huge, floating, cylindrical structures with an Earth-like environment. By the middle of the first universal century, more than half of all people are living in these colonies. On the surface, all of humanity appears to be at peace. But beneath the surface simmers trouble. People who had remained on Earth start thinking of themselves as members of a privileged class, while those who had emigrated to space colonies yearn for autonomy. In Universal Century 0079, the political leader of the moderates, Zion Zundakun, is assassinated by hardliners, and the Principality of Zion wages a war of independence against the Earth Federation. The Earth Federation never imagined that Zion, whose military forces are but a thirtieth of theirs, would resort to military action. Despite being so outnumbered, however, the Xeon forces are formidable, thanks to a new weapon they've developed, the mobile suit. Armed with these brilliant killing machines, Xeon have an overwhelming advantage. In addition to deploying mobile suits, the Xeon forces have another strategy, which it plans in detail and executes with icy efficiency. Xeon drops a space colony onto Earth like a mammoth missile. A mere month after the war begins, about half Earth's population is wiped out. In the face of such a critical situation, the Earth Federation cannot afford to sit idly by, so it develops its own set of mobile suits. Of the mobile suits designed by the Federation, the Gundam is the most lethal. Act 2. The main story and the new types. In the dramatic world of Gundam, the heroic figures are called new types. Humans had evolved by fighting with each other. Over time, they had lost the capacity to survive in environments other than the Earth. The need to move into space spurred further evolution. New types emerged. People with advanced levels of perception and intuition. Characteristics that unfortunately led them into the tragedy of war. In the course of the war, the new types are awoken. One of them is Amura Rei. The son of Tem Rei, designer of the Gundam, Amura left Side 7 as a refugee. As fate would have it, Amura finds himself in the cockpit of the Gundam and in the war against his will. As a result of their immaturity and unhoned skills, Amuro and his compatriots aboard the battleship White Base sometimes confront each other as they struggle to survive the war. Gradually, however, Amuro grows up, his fighting skills improve dramatically, and he becomes an ace pilot.
away. The Xeon forces have new types as well, such as Char as Nabal, Xeon's most famous pilot nicknamed the Red Comet. Char is the son of Xeon Zomdakun, founder of the Principality of Xeon, but had his name changed. As an officer in the Xeon forces, he keeps secret his mission to avenge the death of his father at the hands of the Zabi family. Char has a sister, whom he had separated from at a young age and lost contact with. Her name is Sayla Mass, and she too is a new type. Ironically, Sayla had moved onto the mobile suit carrier White Base and become a pilot with the Federal Forces, and is thus at war with her brother, Char. The Principality of Xeon also has a new type comparable to the Earth Federation's ace Amuro, the wafty willowy Lala Soon. Recruited by Char and trained by him as a pilot, Lala becomes a fierce combatant. She loves Char, and Char cherishes her. However, an inadvertent spiritual bond based on new type telepathy develops between Lala and Amuro. Despite this, Lala's duty to Shar prevents her from following her heart, and she is forced to battle her destined soulmate to protect her masked mentor. Tragically, Lala is mistakenly killed by Amuro, and at that moment, the resonance between Lala and Amuro enables them to transcend time, and they vaguely predict that someday, all humans will be new types. The Xeon forces, which keep returning to the battlefront to counter offensive thrusts by the Earth Federation forces, is at a distinct disadvantage, one that becomes alarmingly obvious with each passing day. In desperation, the Xeon forces launch an assault at its last line of defense space fortress. One squabble after another leads to intense conflicts among the Zabis, among brothers and among parents and children. While the Zabis self-destruct, as if a symbol of the plight of old type humans, the next generation of humans, the new types, engage in decisive battles. Amuro and Shar carry on an epic battle, even after destroying each other's mobile suits. Shar's sister Sayla intervenes, saying, Stop, Shar! You don't have to fight each other. Just because there's a war going on doesn't mean you guys have to. Sayla's desperate appeal strikes a chord with both of them, and the fighting ceases. Amuro, after hearing in his mind Lala say, new types are not about killing each other, are they? Feels like dying and joining his departed soulmate. He then senses the concern of his compatriots at the White Base and escapes from the Space Fortress, which was sinking into the fires of hell.
The sight of Amuro returning alive makes his compatriots cry with joy. The war concludes, and there is a truce between the Earth Federation and the new Principality of Zeon. Act 3, The Gundam Saga. Two decades on, and Gundam is now a legend. Before we proceed into the future, let's look back on the past two decades. After the end of the first series, a series of sequels came out with the same worldview and futuristic setting, but different characters. TV series, Zeta Gundam, Double Zeta Gundam, and Victory Gundam. Theater films, Mobile Suit Gundam, Char's Counter-Attack, and Gundam F-91. Video films, Gundam 0083, Gundam 08 MS Team, Gundam 0080, War in the Pocket, and the TV series, Mobile Fighter G Gundam, based on a different plot in which mobile suits play the leads in an Olympic Games of robot combat. And yet another TV series, New Mobile Report Gundam Wing, and After War Gundam X, which tell stories of future wars after the Universal Century. In 1999, there will be a new TV series based on Gundam stories. On top of this, a new film, G Savior, which features full CGI and live footage, is waiting for takeoff. Numerous new projects and events organized by the Big Bang Project are also on the burner. A new era is just around the corner. Act 4, The Gundam Business in Japan. The targets of Gundam-related business comprise a wide range, from the core of 10-year-olds up to 30-year-olds, all of whom are primarily males. There are thought to be at least 500,000 die-hard Gundam fans in Japan. Hobby Department. In July 1980, Gundam was commercialized in the form of a plastic model. The product became the biggest hit the hobby industry had ever experienced and was a real social phenomenon. In the 19 years since then, a new series has been put out every year forming a stable market. The cumulative sales of the over 345 products in this genre are an amazing 290 million units. Electronics department. Second to the plastic models in sales are video games. Although we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of the launch of the series, Gundam's popularity has never waned. In 1998, the company released three main titles, shipping some 1.6 million units. As peripheral merchandise, the Gundam lineup never ceases expanding. Capsule toys, trading cards, laser discs, and videotapes. In 1999, the year of Gundam's 20th anniversary, the company aims to sell 20 billion yen's worth of peripheral Gundam merchandise on a group-wide basis in Japan. The Gundam phenomenon marches relentlessly onward toward even higher ground. Stay tuned, won't you? Gundam. Big Bang Project. 